Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm Mama Loves You GB here on Flosstube, but also over on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday Morning Briefing. This is sometime in January, about mid-January. I'll put the date on the bottom because I forgot to look and I honestly can't tell you. I could give you a, a time frame within three or four days, but actually what the date is, I don't know. <laughs> and we're somewhere in the late 50s in terms of episodes as well. So, uh, I hope everyone's had a lovely, lovely week. I've had not such a nice week, but it's been interspersed with some really high spots. So um, unfortunately, at the beginning of the week on Monday, my uncle passed away. Um, he actually passed away on his birthday. He is the uncle that I mentioned that had started with vascular dementia quite seriously in the last six to nine months, really. Um, there'd been as with all cases of, of dementia, there'd been kind of flashes of it in the two or three years preceding, um, but really things started to get a little bit more more tricky for him about, yeah, six to nine months, maybe a year ago. Um, and so much so that about eight weeks ago, he was put into um, a respite care while they actually assessed what should, what should happen to him because he didn't have any... Um, he didn't have a wife, he didn't have any children, so just us as nieces and nephews and brothers and sisters-in-law. Um, and so, yeah, he was put, in, put into respite care, um, which was really good, it was a really good thing for him. Um, but then, just before the weekend, he had a really huge uh, bleed on the brain um, and never regained consciousness. Um, and we knew, well, we had a feeling that he was waiting for his birthday. Um, and we were right. So a few a few family members managed to see him on his birthday in hospital, even though he wasn't conscious, take him some birthday cards. And yeah, about 10 to six in the evening, he he went, he passed away. Um, so obviously the whole family is super, super sad. He was the last of five brothers um, that were sort of quite well known, infamous maybe, I suppose, in our in our local town. Um, and yeah, so he was the last of them. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's just super sad. Although, as I, as I say that, we are grateful um, for small mercies in the fact that we all know that dementia can be a very, very long, and very, very drawn out, horrendous condition. And so in some respects, and I hope that those of you who know, um, about dementia, have had an experience of it, will we'll know that I say with kindness in my heart that we are grateful for small mercies that he didn't have to face that very, very long, very, very drawn out decline. So I've decided to stitch something to celebrate the five brothers, one of which of course was my dad. Um, and the chart that I've chosen is Barbara Anna, All Creatures Great and Small. So I'm gonna put a picture of it up here. And I've always loved this chart. And I think it's got enough size and impact that it would be something that I would really want to stitch and really want to remember. Um, because I'm religious, I've always wanted, I've always wondered what I would do with the paragraphs either side that's obviously from the hymn. So what I've decided to do is in some way to reword it so that each of their names is mentioned um, and the town that we're from. So um, I'm gonna do that. So I did break my rule about not buying new charts, so I hope you forgive me on that one, but uh, but yeah. So I was feeling kind of sad, and then I had a lovely gift in the post, which made me feel so, so much better. Um, and it was from a lovely friend, Wendy, from across the pond, who is Atlanta Stitcher. Now you may recall that in the Flossmas, um, I showed her beautiful video that she made of her outstanding Christmas tree and she she wanted to send me a gift just to say thank you for, for helping her get the, the video out and, and showing it um, and she sent me a super letter as well which is very very kind and I think actually probably gives me more credit than I than I really deserve um, and a nice little card and she made this for me I have always always wanted a bag like this every time somebody has shown a bag like this that they've made or bought or been given I've kind of coveted it and so she has made this for me 
which I think are, is amazing. And of course, the, bat, the chart that's going to go into it and the project that's going to go into it is my new All Creatures Great and Small. So it couldn't have come on a better day. So thank you very much, Wendy. Um, obviously already sent you an email, but thank you so, so much. And on the inside, it's got lovely lining. I do like bags with a, a pale lining because I'm always worried a little bit about transfer. Um, but yeah, that's my bag. So I can't wait to put a little a little tag on there. I'm going to make one um, using the All Creatures Great and Small, a bit of the, um, the chart and make a nice nice tag for it and then put all my my flosses and my fabrics in there so I was so touched by that and it came on exactly exactly the right time so thank you again for that right now it's going to be a double header this week because I do actually have another video to release tomorrow now so many of you have asked me um, to do a video about how I dye my fabrics using rip dye. Now I've done other dyeing fabric videos before using different um, different dyes but I think everyone's been after a rip dyeing one and I got lots and lots of requests when I showed the fabrics that I dyed specifically for the year in the woods sale by Cottage Garden Samplings which I think I've got right first time there yeah? which is amazing. So I don't think I've got that particular bag over here. I have actually, two seconds. So I have got it. These were the fabrics that I had dyed for the Cottage Garden Samplings Sal. And if, you're, if you've been watching me for a little while, you'll be probably familiar with these. What I wanted to do was to replicate several Picture This Plus fabrics that were going to be used for the chart. Try and get them in the right order. So this is the winter one. This one is the spring one. This one is the summer one. And then this one is the autumn one. Now, if you want a bit more information about those, if you go back to the video that's got the screenshot actually of me showing them with a rather smug look on my face <laughs> then you'll find the information there and in the notes of that video you'll find the colours that I actually used so what you can do is put that in conjunction with the technique that I'm going to show you in the video that's going to come out on Monday um, if you want to have a go at making some of your own. Um, so what I decided to do was I decided to do neutral fabrics um, because I think those are some of the ones that are hardest to buy online because they don't always come the colour that you want them because it's really hard to photograph them. So that's why I quite like doing my own neutral fabrics because then at least I'm in control of the colour. Um, so, as I said, I did five. I did four that are 36 count and one that is 32 count. So I'm going to give you a sneak peek. I will show you them and I'll quickly show you them all separate as well and what I'm planning on using them for. But if you want more information, go and watch the video that's coming out tomorrow, which is a special edition for these. So these are the ones that I've done. They're all fat quarters. Those four are 36 count and this one's a 32 count. So let me show you what I did. I did a very, very pale one, just a really quick dip dye. I just wanted to take it off white because I want to use it for the Erica Michaels berries. So, there it is, I knew I'd brought it up. So there's the Erica Michaels berries. There's my little stitchy tin that goes with the Erica Michaels berries and I'm going to be stitching them in Sulky 1035. Sulky 1035. I've even got a little pair of red scissors in there. So that's the plan for that one. 
and I had already dyed a, a piece like that but then I changed my mind and I sent it to Christina for Christmas so um, I did only did another one for that bit so that's the first one I need some sky hooks let's put it on the windowsill the second one that I dyed is just a kind of a good a good neutral and this may very well end up being my All Creatures Great and Small piece. Um, so it's just a good neutral, good mid-tones, and I think that will work. I think that will work well. That's a possibility. My third piece that I dyed, I wanted to have quite a yellowy golden base to it because this is for the 12 Days of Christmas style that I'm stitching with finally a farm, farm girl Chrissy and that's not easy to say tonight so yeah it's quite a warm yellowy tone and you can see it if I put the two next to each other you can see how much more yellowy this one is and the last one of the 36 counts is this one and this is what I would call a greyish so it's got a kind of a grey beige base to it. So this one is a possibility for the um, All Creatures Great and Small but I'm gonna see because this one is also a possibility for the new Plum Street Samplers one that I was sent by Fox and Rabbit and I'll show you that in a minute because this was my last one, this is a 32 count which I'm really, really pleased with. And actually, I need to I need to bring the two things closer together. Let's have a little look. Because part of me even wondered whether this might work. Could be a bit of an unusual choice, but, and it will depend on the greens, I think. But whether that might work on there. I'm just thinking about that white house and how good that could look on there but I also think it would work really nicely on this one. The called for is baked clay which I think actually isn't quite as yellow as it shows on there so that's a possibility but I do have one other possibility as well so anyway <laughs> <laughs> Lots of possibilities of fabric, which is what we like, isn't it? So those are the fabrics that I dyed. As I said, please do pop along and have a look at the video. You'll see in the video that I mention um, that I've signed up to the Buy Me A Coffee. So I haven't signed up to the one that's Buy Me A Coffee. I've signed up, signed up to the one that's Buy Me A Coffee, which is K-O-F-I. Um, I did have a go at signing up to the one that's buying me a coffee, but quite frankly, they wanted more information than I wanted th than I was going to give them. They wanted more information than I gave my last mortgage application. <laughs> um, I think the next question was about my inside leg measurement. So I sort of created an account, but I never fully signed up with them. So this one um, is much much easier. It links into my PayPal account. So if you do find something useful in the tutorial videos or something useful in any of these videos and, and you might want to then you're more than welcome I would very much appreciate a coffee but don't feel you have to not compulsory at all so those are the fabrics please go and check out the video you will probably well I'm, probably, I'm sure you'll enjoy I'm sure you'll enjoy if you're at all interested in dyeing I'm sorry, sure you will enjoy she says Right, let's have a look and see what I've been stitching. I think I did a little bit of work on Caroline Scott as well. I'll put a picture up here, but I haven't brought her up. So I'll show you her next week if I do some more work on her. The main thing that I've worked on, and anybody would think it was Christmas, is Santa Project. <laughs> now this doesn't make any sense to me at all because I'm the sort of person that come Boxing Day, I'm starting getting twitchy at wanting to take Christmas decorations down. So. If you can tell me why I want to stitch Christmas right at this moment in time, then you are a better person than I am. I have two finishes 
and one that is currently in progress. So I'm going to show you my two finishes. My one finish is a Mill Hill that I'd finished. I think I actually finished it on Christmas Eve, but I hadn't shown it to you. And last week I'd left it on my desk. And the second one is another Mill Hill that I was doing as a monthly Orny Cell stitch along. So that's the one that I have finished that I haven't actually shown you that I've finished. So here he is. Let me just take that needle out of there because that's the beading needle. That'll be sharp. And there he is. Now I wish the camera would pick up how sparkly he actually is those beads are beautiful so I've got him to finish and I have also finished another one of the little charmed faces now these are the ones that I like to stitch at school at lunch and I did have a meeting this week that was one that I had to attend without my camera or my microphone on so that was a perfect opportunity there, just to uh, listen along to that and get a little bit done on, on him. So, this is the actual face. And this is his hat. And there is a little snowflake charm to hang on the corner of the hat there, but I haven't, I don't think I've brought that up. And so that goes on top, oops, that goes on top like that. And when I finish them all, I will have three of these charm Santa faces. I've got one other one to finish, plus this one, plus this one. So I will do a Mill Hill finishing video. Um, I know Elizabeth Ankin Stitch did a little short or a little, um, Instagram story about how she finished some of hers off and she used the sticky back vel uh, velvet that I use and she said she wasn't as enamoured because it didn't seem to stick as well. And what I probably should have said a while ago is that I actually put a double layer of really really st strong sticky back um, sellotape, you know double sided sellotape, the really strong stuff on the back of here and then put the sticky back on so it, it doesn't go anywhere then. Um, so I will do a little a little tutorial about how I finish these. And I've got three to show you that I can finish. So there's that. And then the other thing that I've worked a lot on is... Oops. Let's go back in. Is um, a chart by Teresa Kogut. Now I've told you before that I'm in Teresa's Patreon. And... She gives you the opportunity to purchase past Patreon charts as well. Um, it's in a kind of locked down area, so you have to be in the Patreon and then she sends you the link and the password to get into this sort of secure area where you can purchase past Patreon charts. And I absolutely love this one. There's, I just love Teresa's faces that she does. With so few colours and lines, she can create such an expressive face. And I wanted to stitch him on this fabric that I'd got last week which is the sparkly 32 count so I did a sulky conversion as you might expect and the reason that I've done so much much on this is because to begin with I wasn't sure it was working and I wasn't sure I liked it and then I realized I did like it and so I went a bit mad on it and so there he is so I've got the rest of the word Merry there to do and another boot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the word Merry and then go up to the boot because I think I might be one stitch, ooh, nearly fell off the chair then, one stitch out somewhere on the length of the coat. So I can lose a line there, no problem. And yeah, you can just about see the sparkly, the sparkliness of it. And I'm going to finish it on this which came from home bargains <laughs> home bargains <laughs> over the the winter now 
the fabric and the actual wood don't really go together so I think I'm going to paint it a very dark black uh, very dark brown or black and then I'm going to finish it on the front as kind of like a flat a flat fold to go on the front there so that's what I'm going to do as soon as I saw the sizes of it it actually made me think of this little sleigh so that's the plan I'm still quite enjoying stitching on it but even if it goes away for until next Christmas I'm not going to be too worried so that is my stitching that I've done this week right what am I going to do next I have actually written myself a little list a little playlist um, and uh, yeah I'm hoping I'll manage to get everything done and not forget everything floss tubers that I've been watching this week I have been watching fox and rabbit now fox and rabbit have taken up quite a lot of my time this week because they've got the last couple of videos that I've got to catch up on have been quite long and the last video is hilarious absolutely hilarious Karen and Bren are just oh they just make me raw um Bren showed his whip parade which was quite modest and he was quite happy with that and then Karen started on her whips and the things that she wants to stitch and you could just see him sort of nodding off and he kept saying to it she kept saying to me are you falling asleep are you falling asleep um, and then they started having a Barney in the middle of it <laughs> It was really, really funny, and you should definitely go and have a have a look. They are they are great together. But Karen, it looks like you've been in my chart stash and my whip pile and my things that I want to stitch because literally everything she pulled out, I was like, yep, yeah, got that one, stitch that, yep, yeah, got that one, stitch that. So very, very similar tastes there. So definitely go and have a look. And I started watching today, creatively yours is whip parade as well. Um, who else have I been watching? While well, Cyrus Knapp's most recent one, although I think I may have watched that a little while ago, although I didn't say. Um, always worth watching, Christina. Always worth watching. Um, who else? Just the normal crowd, really. Elizabeth Ann can stitch. Um, I'm, I got the feeling I'm missing somebody. Oh, Brenda and the serial starter. Well, we don't need to. That just goes without saying, doesn't it? Anyway, what I'll do is I'll write a proper list for next week and then. I'll let you know who I've been watching. Right, giveaways. I did a giveaway last week for two charts that had been kindly donated to me by Alice. And I've got two more to do today. So let me just do the winners. Um, I've already commented on their comment on YouTube. So if you can get in touch with me, my email is in the drop down box. So there we go. So this is Christmas Tea by Plum Street Samplers and the winner of this was Hannah Mansfield. So well done Hannah, if you can get in touch with me. And this one was called, what's it called? These are a few of my favourite things or my favourite things. Uh, and the winner of this was Jean Doby or Dobby. So Jean again, if you can get in touch with me, um, either on email or DM me on Instagram, whichever is easiest. And I will get your charts out to you in the post ASAP. Two more then to give away. This one, which is by uh, Rosewood Manor, which is called Sailing Ships Sampler, which is beautiful there. The name on the bottom is Henry Christopher, Christopher Sandwick. Um, but I'm sure you could change the name on this because this is not a reproduction, although I'm pretty sure that the the boats and the ships on there will have come off at the samplers so you could put whomever you play whomever you pleased on this one so if you want to go for this one and you want to enter this one if you could say ships and if you could be in the UK please or have a UK address I don't mind that if you're outside the UK as long as you've got somebody that I can send this to in the UK and they can post it on for you that's that's up to you so as long as I can post this to a UK address then I'm a Happy Bunny. And then this one is a lovely one. It's the Pink Sparrow Sampler. So this is by, is it Brenda Gervais? I'm sure it's Brenda Gervais. I had this, I had, I'm sure I had this before, though I couldn't see on the front of it who it's by. And then with thy needle and thread, yeah. 
shouldn't doubt yourself, should you? So if you would like to do this one, then if you can go for the word sparrow. Now I'm smiling because I was having a conversation with um, a friend of mine who's a drama teacher um, in the week and we were talking about the science of the lambs um, and I, uh, I said to him that my mum refers to Clarice Starling as that sparrow woman. So <laughs> um, yeah, if you want to have a go for this, go for sparrow in your comments somewhere, please. And again, be in the UK so that I can post it out to you. Right, done that bit. I'm literally, this may look more organised than normal, folks. The reason it's working is because I've actually stuck my list onto my tripod rather than kind of having it on my on my lap or then putting it down somewhere and forgetting all about it. Right. Cross stitch camp. Cross stitch camp. I saw that uh, Colorado cross stitcher um, Sherry is doing another cross stitch camp. Now I did some cross stitch camp stuff in the summer just gone. I think I only really did the first month properly um, and then started the second month and then didn't really get as far with the third month although I did have some ideas about what I wanted to do so the idea and I have printed out what she put on her um, Facebook page so let me just run through the idea is that you start a camp project on the February the 1st and finish it by February the 28th if you want to be eligible for the prize draw if not then you can take as long as you want the challenge is to stitch a one colour piece any colour any size and there's various different hashtags that you have to put onto your pictures to be included in the prize draw. So you have to put certain hashtags on your um, photo that you put on the first, uh, which is with hashtag winter cross stitch camp and hashtag Colorado cross stitcher. And then at the same, when you post your finishing picture, you put the same hashtags. Um, it's all free. You don't have to purchase anything to, to be... Um, entered into it. So I have chosen to do falling on the floor. Ooh. I got to that age where you make a noise now when you bend down. And I did have a little look, see if anything else needed picking up as well. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. This is Quaker Block Print by Threadwork Primitives. And the stitch count is 95 by 115. And I am gonna do it on 36 count. In fact, I'm gonna do it on 36 count. What is this? Vellum by Picture This Plus. Which I had a small start of something else on, but I will pick that out. In fact, that looks like the St. Ives sampler. But I'm gonna do it on 36 count vellum. And I am going to use Valdani blackened teal so let's see if I can get that to show up so it's a beautiful dark greens teals it's a good name for it it's a good name for it so that's what I'm gonna do for my cross stitch camp now it did strike me that if you haven't already if you were looking for a monochrome piece, you could go for Nessie and stitch her in whatever colour you fancy. It's a bit of a shameless plug there. Nessie Mitchell, you can find her on my Etsy store, but she is a monochrome sampler. I know lots of you have bought her, lots of you have stitched her, and lots of you have got her ready to stitch. So you could get her out for Colorado Cross Stitchers Winter Cross Stitch Camp. I'm also going to put that in my project bag as well so that I know what it is I'm supposed to be doing. Because I'll have slept by the time it's time to start that on the 1st of February. And it's also time to start on the 1st of February um, the Hands Across the Sea one from Hobby House Needleworks, which is called Rose Ada Featherstone. Rose Ada Featherstone. So I'm hoping maybe one of the fabrics that I've dyed for this weekend might, might come in useful for one of those. 
Now, if you didn't want to stitch, stitch Nessie, and obviously I can't imagine why you might not want to, the freebie that I've got would be a great monochromatic choice and it's not too big. It's by Modern Folk Embroidery and it's called Light a Candle. It's better to light a single candle than curse the darkness. This one is 97 by 81 so a little bit smaller than the one I've chosen but it would still look absolutely fabulous in any colourway that you wanted to do. So you can get this from Jacob's website, Modern Folk Embroidery. You just put it in your cart as if you're putting in any of his other charts. And obviously you, you might want to put another chart in at the same time. They've, Jacob's got so many brilliant um, things that are monochromatic or could be monochromatic. So you could pop something else in at the same time if you wanted to, but you don't have to. You can just put this in your cart and then you just sort of check out and it's there ready for immediate download. So haul, I've got a little bit of haul. Um, obviously I did buy the All Creatures Great and Small chart, um, which I'm, I'm allowing myself. But other than that, my free, my freebies, my haul, I wish it was free, it's not. But the main thing that I have bought is a mitre saw. <laughs> I have decided that I am going to go down the route of resizing um, frames. I'm going to see if I can resize frames because there's so many lovely frames in charity shops and secondhand shops and things like that. And frames are so expensive that I'm going to see if I can resize them. I've watched the YouTube videos. It doesn't look too difficult. Um, Kim Goldman from... Um, oh, I have to put her channel name across the bottom because it's just as soon as I went to say it, it just went out of my head. Um, but you know who I mean. She assures me that it's not too difficult. So I bought a mitre saw from Screwfix. It was in the sale, so very happy with it. A local carpenter friend of ours told her, told me that um, the thing to look for, because obviously I don't need it to be particularly powerful, but the thing to look for is a blade with lots of teeth on it so that it cuts nice and cleanly. So that's what I got. I bought some threads. Now these are for a couple of different projects. Some of them are the overdyed flosses for the Plum Street Samplers Spring Moon. And the rest of them are overdyed flosses to finish kitting up Heartstring Samplery Merry Birds. So there's a few in there. For that one as well. I love that chart. Love, 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 love. And what else did I get? I got one of these. Now I got this from B&M for seven pounds. Lovely big stackable storage box, which reminded me of the lovely big storage boxes that you might have seen other floss tubers showing, um, but this one was seven pounds. So very, very pleased with that. That is definitely gonna contain lots of bits and bobs before too much longer. And also in the B&M sale, I found a really long <laughs> wooden chopping board for three pounds, which will fit a really nice long stitch on. And for three pounds, I'm quite happy to, to grab it now and then just store it. And then I spent three pounds on something else. Look at this. I'm in love with this. So this is for storing my scissors. How beautiful is that? So I found it in a little secondhand shop. It is a crystal cut glass rose bowl with a glass rose, perfect condition for three pounds and so I cannot wait to put some scissors in that. It needs a bit of a, it needs a bit of a dust but yeah it's so in the light it's so so sparkly. So for three pounds 
that was definitely coming home with me. And that's it from me. One last glance at my list. I can't see I need to do anything else. So I will see you next week. Please do enter the giveaway. Please like and subscribe and I shall see you next week. Stay classy, Stitchers. <laughs>